Hello and welcome back to our channel, Two Bears on Tour. However, I am on my own, so I am only one bear on tour today. So where am I? I am in Gloucestershire. I am in a town called Winchcombe. Well, it's just outside a town called Winchcombe. And I am in Hales Abbey. So let's go explore. Nestled at the foot of the picturesque Cosswold Hills, this now ruinous Cistercian monastery once held an important holy relic, which turned it into a major pilgrimage destination. Founded in 1246, this monastery survived both swathes of the Black Death and was resurrected after bad administration brought it to the brink of collapse before Henry VIII dissolved it in 1539. In 1242, Richard, the Earl of Cornwall and the second son of King John, believed his faith helped him to survive a huge sea storm, after which he pledged to repay God for saving him. He vowed to found a monastery and three years later his brother, Henry III, granted him the manor of Hales. Richard spared no expense building an abbey here, spending an astronomical £6,600. It was Richard's visit to Royalmont Abbey near Paris which inspired his decision that his own new monastery should belong to the Cistercian order. The first monks to inhabit Hales Abbey came from his father's foundation at Beaulieu Abbey in Hampshire. Consecrated in November 1251, the monastery's church became the favoured location for Richard's family members to be buried. The Cistercian order was regarded to be the surest road to heaven and burials within the Cistercian church were believed to ease the passage of the soul through purgatory to eternal rest in heaven. Richard, three of his sons and his second wife were all buried in the abbey's church. In 1270, Richard's son, Edward, presented the monks with a phial that was said to contain blood shed by Christ on the cross. The east end of the church was rebuilt so the relic could be displayed behind the high altar. The relic, known as the Holy Blood of Hales, turned the abbey into one of the most important pilgrimage destinations in medieval England. In the 1300s, Edward's death left the abbey without a financial benefactor, and it soon ran into financial problems. The buildings badly needed maintaining. The Black Death swept in in 1348 and again in 1361, killing most of the monks. In 1402, thieves broke in and stole riches worth over £600. The abbey was also being poorly administered. The buildings were falling into ruin and debts greatly outweighed any income. The papacy stepped in and granted special spiritual privileges and generous remissions from penances to pilgrims who made monetary gifts to the abbey. These gifts were used to repair the church, abbey and accommodations. This was followed by a period of prosperity for the abbey and in the early 16th century Hales had investments from individuals at the very top of Tudor society. However, Henry VIII's henchmen had Hales in their sights. In 1538, the relic was denounced as a fake and destroyed. It had been tested and the blood was found to be honey that had been coloured with saffron. On Christmas Eve 1539, the abbot signed the surrender deed and the monastery was dissolved. So this area was the actual church um, and where the high altar was and it's also where the blood, the relic of the blood was stored. You can clearly see that that would have been where everybody sat. This is the um, the altar bit. You can see the wavy outline of the actual um, church itself. And some of the posts are still there. These are the stone um, the bottoms of the stone pillars. And this bit at the back, we believe this little hump here, is where the relic would have been stored behind the altar.
this beautiful archway here, according to the plaque just by it, is where the monks would have entered the church. So they would have gone through here into the actual church bit, which we know to be this bit here. This particular part is the vestry. It was here that the abbey's valuable sacred objects and library books were kept. Um, it's actually closed off, so you can't go through that archway. It's obviously got some dangerous masonry at the moment. Look at how beautiful it is. I absolutely love looking at architecture. It's just fantastic. Beautiful is actually the chapter house. It is where all the business was conducted. It's also where all the punishments were being <laughs> allocated. Um, now those monks, well they weren't all behaved themselves, didn't all behave themselves. Um, there are documented evidence of punishments being given out for monks who have gone into the village and uh, been seen in the local alehouses. Um, there's been doc there also documented evidence of women staying overnight, um, monks not kneeling properly for prayer, <laughs> um, singing in the wrong key, that sort of thing. Punishments would have been given for that. Naughty monks. So um, this is the part that I'm going to read this plaque to you so you can see what I'm reading from. Okay. Um, it's got a doorway at both ends and was apparently the only place in the monastery where monks were allowed to talk but only about essential business and only for the briefest possible time. Imagine only being able to speak for a very short amount of time and only about official business. Cool, that would have driven me mad. I like it could gossip me. that the water comes from that ditch up there down through through all of these various channels to service the monastery an ingenious little bit of technology so this is um, kind of the dining room really. This is where the monks ate and they generally only ate one meal a day of beer, bread, vegetables, maybe some meat, maybe some cheese on feast days if they were lucky. Um, but uh, the diet wasn't a brilliant diet. It was obviously meant to nourish the soul and not the body. That was the rules and um, well I don't know, I think I could have survived on cheese sandwiches. I like my cheese sandwiches. Coming back through from 
the refectory, the dining room I think I said. <laughs> this is actually the latrine area where there was uh, rudimentary toilets. Obviously there was seats where you could sit down and do your business and um, it all got taken away by the ingenious little stream um, system that we've discovered. There here we are, it says lavatory on the wall there. Um, this is where they would have washed their hands and their bottoms. to detail even in the loo. In the 1600s Hales became a grand country residence but by the early 18th century the site was left to fall ruinous. By the mid 19th century the ruins were attracting visitors. The site was excavated between 1899 and 1908. In 1927 it was visited by Sir James Fowler the resident warden at Beaulieu Abbey where the original monks had come from. He was appalled at the state of the former monastery and using money received from a public appeal, he built the museum and encouraged visitors to contribute towards the upkeep of the site. The site was donated to the National Trust in 1937 and subsequently passed into the care of English heritage. There is an outside and an inside museum which are both full of interesting and historical artefacts that have been found on the site it's well worth taking the time to look around. Hales Abbey was such an important site, for almost three centuries it was the centre of monastic life and an important place of pilgrimage. Today its tranquil ruins provide a quiet place to relax and it is a popular picnic destination. perimeter walk here as well that you can enjoy and walk around the edge of the whole site um, and it's really pretty and really beautiful. Um, the site's also dog friendly you can bring your dogs in um, and it's just it's just a lovely place to walk around. I said I was on my own earlier I'm actually not on my own. I've actually got not one, not two, but three channels with me today. Come on, I'll go and introduce you. I have Kim from Kim's Picks 59. I have Cara from Open Minded Wanderer. And of course I have my brother Watto from Wandering with Watto. The link to all of those channels are in the description below. So if you feel like it, please pop along and go and visit them, check them out, and uh, give them some love as well. I'm doing it now. Cara <laughs> 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 making her back. <laughs> um, if you do come to Hales Abbey, if you just pop across the road, literally opposite, there's a beautiful church, you'll see it behind me, it's called Hales Church. It is absolutely fantastic. There's some beautiful, beautiful paintings um, on the walls inside and it's, uh, it's, it's older than the Abbey itself and it's just an amazing place to go and have a little wander around. So if you ever do come across 
dropped Hales at me, please pop across the road and have a walk around Hales Church. It's lovely. There has been a church here at Hales since at least the 1100s. The abbey which sits opposite was founded in 1246. This church predates it by at least a century. Records suggest that it was built sometime between 1139 and 1151 during the reign of King Stephen. traces of Norman architecture throughout the church, in the walls, the windows and the roof. The paintings on the wall are of exceptional quality and are thought to have been painted after the nearby abbey was built. It's extraordinary that these paintings weren't destroyed during Henry VIII's disillusions, having been saved by quick-thinking priests who overpainted them with a whitewash to preserve them. The frieze along the roof line is much faded but is thought to depict the Apostles. Elsewhere are figures depicting medieval bestiary, such as unicorns, griffins and dragons. There are also plenty of floral and fauna imagery and hunting scenes too. The tiles on the floor are the remains of heraldic tiles laid ad hoc and in no particular order. They are thought to have come from excavations of the nearby abbey. Also painted figures of St Catherine of Alexandria and St Margaret of Antioch on either side of the altar. were in situ prior to the Reformation, except the box pew, which probably dates nearer to the time the church was built. The font is authentic to the time when the church was built. It is made from Cotswold stone and has eight sides. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed your trip around the lovely, beautiful Hales Abbey here in Gloucestershire. It is a wonderful place. Um, it's a brilliant place for a picnic, but maybe not today because it is <laughs> quite wet. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me the thumbs up, the press the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you want to watch more and um, go and visit the other channels too. But thanks ever so much for watching. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.